So I think it started back in May that we started getting reports about a bobcat in the Citrus Park area. And the photographs that we were seeing, the cat seemed to be covered in mange. Today I got another email and the lady sent a video of, <laughs> she was like, I've seen bobcats before, but I don't know what that is because it doesn't have any hair. And I told her that was probably the cat we've been chasing around Citrus Park all this time. But it's, despite not having any fur, it's been healthy enough that we haven't been able to trap it. And so today when that call came in, I put out to all of our bobcat rehabbers, would anybody like to go help this lady set a humane trap? And so Gail took did you cat. Take cat with you mm -hmm. and tell us what happened. Um, well, first, couldn't get in the gate. <laughs> oh, was it one of those? It's one of those. She gave me the code and I was, you know, I was being, not to disparage anybody, I was having a blonde moment. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to get there. Yeah, I exactly. resemble that remark. <laughs> so I had, and every time I tried, so I had to pull up over because somebody was behind us. So I pulled out of the way so people could get by. And every time I started to back up, more cars were coming. So finally I was able just to zip through behind somebody, but we found the place. And it's, it's, even though the truck, I took the Tundra and even though the Tundra doesn't say Big Cat Rescue on it, it's like all of a sudden when we started taking traps and food and stuff out of the truck, all of a sudden everybody that was home was like, what's going on? What's going on? And, and um, you're wearing Big Cat Rescue. And, and I was wearing a Big Cat Rescue shirt. And so, um, called the lady, she came out, was her, maybe her husband or boyfriend and maybe her son came out and um, so they showed me where they saw the bobcat and there was like a little, not so dense. There was a lot of that viney stuff. So you, there's no way we could have gotten through any of that. But so I walked a little further. First I had to jump a creek <laughs> and then- I'm so sorry I didn't get to film that. <laughs> that would have been worth it. Uh, so we jumped the creek and we were walking down the, the bank and um, there was like a this like as wide as this table like three feet four feet wide that we could actually walk back into the woods so we kind of walked back in there a little bit kind of just seeing what's back there and there were um there's definitely water waterways back in there so there was some there was definitely access to water all back in there and it wasn't too bad once you got behind that initial shrubbery along that creek it was really thick with those vines but once you got in there there was plenty of room so we just kind of quietly walked around to see if we could see anything and he's probably fed well because they were telling me that every night rabbits come out of the brush and eat along that so he's probably I don't know that we're going to be able to catch him in a trap because I don't know that he's going to want a chicken neck when he's got fresh rabbit. <laughs> he didn't look like he was He did not and he didn't to me look like he was starving either, but so I showed the son and husband, boyfriend, um, how to set the trap and we hit it kind of at that entrance, but kind of like in the bush so that if he was walking by there and smelled the meat, he would go in made sure they understand that the likeliness of them catching the bobcat like immediately was very slim, but there was a very good possibility that they were gonna get possums, armadillos, uh, raccoons, and they said they were fine with opening the door and letting those out. And he said, well, they won't come after us. And I'm like, no, they'll, they'll wanna get away from you as quickly as you open that door, they'll wanna get away. I said, but just make sure you wear gloves so you don't get bit. So um, we set the trap, um, got everything ready to go, and I, um, my phone number is on the side of the trap, plus the lady has my phone number. And I said, early evening, evening, anytime you're sitting there and you look out and you see something in the trap, if you, if, and you can confirm that it's the bobcat, I said, don't get too close to it and absolutely don't do anything with it because if it does have mange, you don't want to touch it. Um, you don't want to touch the cage. You don't want to touch any, uh, anything around it. And she says, is it contagious? I said, yes. So don't touch it. I said, but it doesn't matter any time, day or night that you see that you've caught the bobcat, call, my, call that number. It will immediately come get it. It was not that far from here. So, um, I said, just let us know and we'll, I said, and if 
you get a particularly, you know, over anxious raccoon and you're afraid to let him out, I said, just let us know, we'll come let him out. It's not a big deal. Yeah, possums look so scary in those traps because they're like all teeth and they're just, you know, they're hissing because they're scared, but right. man, do they look scary when yes, they're Yes, they do, but I grew up out in the woods, so I, I'm not, I obviously I don't want to get bit by one, but I also know they're more afraid of you than you are of them usually. So they're the minute you open the door and they see an exit, they'll they'll usually run. So, so you but, left there with some extra bait. Um, yes, I took a container with um, some chicken necks and some red meat and um, told them to make sure don't cut it up in little tiny pieces. They need to it needs to go all the way to the back of the cage and make sure that it stays back there. So. Um, for people who don't know what a humane trap is, can you describe? Um, um, we call them live traps, which means we're able to trap the animal um, and it's not harmed and it's still alive. Basically, it has um, a three-fold door on one end and you fold this door up and it latches with a little latch and way down at the other end. The trap's really long, so they have to really walk into it a pretty good distance. Um, and there's a plate at the end so that they walk into the trap and when they reach for the meat, they step on this plate and the plate triggers this little, and it sets the door and then the door pops down. So that, um, and then there's catches on the top to where even if they push on that door, it won't go back, it won't go back up. And even though you're not part of the rehab crew anymore, you have taken on the responsibility of all of these traps that end up everywhere. Um, I'm not actively acting on the rehab team, um, but I'm kind of like on a backup. Like if there was, um, like Jamie has called me on occasion because I live on property very close to the rehab hospital and the rehab cages. She has called me sometimes late in the evening to go check on an animal because something may have happened or something. So I'm kind of like the emergency person for anything that happens on the sanctuary. My, you know, I'm the emergency call because I'm here all the time. Well, you've taken care of things that were way out of here too, because like, remember when all of those bobcats were getting their heads stuck in those pipes and you went down to, was it Port Charlotte that you were setting traps all the way down there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did take a bunch down there one time, but I took nets and stuff, you know, just in case, you know, that we happen to see it, because if it's that... Maybe acclimated? A, well, I'm thinking more depending on how far, at what stage the mange is, mm -hmm. if it's... You know, so, but if I remember the girls that came with me, they were still pretty ferocious. <laughs> yeah, Pia and Vinkman. Yeah, but just in case, we took nets and, like I said, I wore my long pants and my, and my you know, Your Bobcat outdoors. Your Bobcat boots. <laughs> but, yeah, the, some of the foliage in there was, like, really thick, and it was, once you got back in there, it was more of like a wetlands because it, there was this little creek, but when you got back into the woods, there was like water all around it. So, and if you look on the Google map, you could see it's like there's a pond, but then all around is kind of just, there's no, no development back there. So he's got quite a bit to wander around on, so. And can you explain to people how it is that wild bobcats get mange? Um, mange is a mite. So it's, it's a um, parasite that um, gets into their skin and um, it creates a, like a scabby um, thing off of. And then if they shed, if they shed that skin, they can also shed the mites, which then get into the ground. And then if your dog or cat or whatever is, you know, in that area, then they can pick up the mites. Well, thank you so very much. <laughs> it was it was good to get out of the office and do something, you know, worthwhile for a while. Not that what I do isn't worthwhile, but I'm just saying it's different going out and actually doing something that involves cats. <laughs> Even if it is 90 degrees. <laughs> Even if it is 90. Probably 105 outside. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you. Uh -huh.